when I started talking to animals, I was a big scaredy cat. I I had come from a belief system of that's that's something not of God. Mm -mm, keep that away from me. Two, I've been really a lot more open to it and wanted to try it. But when I started, I was terrified to tell anybody. Look at me now. I'm telling the whole world. <laughs> um, but one of the first times I finally had the bravery to tell even a stranger about their pet. So when I was in college, I was blessed to do a study abroad program in South Africa and uh, changed my life for sure. But we went to this really interesting exhibit experience with Jessica the Hippo. Some of you might even know who Jessica the Hippo is. She was this orphaned hippo. Was or um, She got separated from her parents when she was an absolute baby in a flood. Like... 20 years ago, and this really kind human couple found her, started to raise her. They had a river right next to their house. And uh, she grew into a full-size hippo. They didn't keep her enclosed, and her river ran into the main river where she could go to the wild herd of hippos. Um, could live wherever she wanted. She did go visit the wild herd occasionally, but she would come back to her people. Um, she'd spend most of the time with her people. And uh, and they made a tourist attraction out of her, which I felt weird about until I heard how much free will she had in this situation. She loved it. And I, of course, could not help but connect with her. Jessica was a total princess. <laughs> total princess. Um, she knew how loved she was. Um, she would swim up to the dock and we could kind of like maybe feed her some water watermelon or something. And, uh, and some jugs of sweet tea that I'm sure were really bad for her. <laughs> but she loved it. And so uh, she encouraged me to, to rub right behind her ears. And as we kept talking, she told me some insights about those that she uh, spent a lot of time with. And one of them was Richie, a second hippo that this couple had rescued. Same situation as Jessica, but five years before. So he was still a lot smaller. He was still kind of a baby. I asked her what she thought of him. And she goes, well... I don't, I don't like him because he's small. And if he comes over here to the dock, he's going to take all the attention just because he's a baby. <laughs> and so the only reason that Jessica didn't like this younger hippo is uh, because he'd steal all the attention. Yep. Girl loved her life. She did not want it to change. And so I told her what the owners had kind of told everybody on the tour, which was, Richie was going to need, he was getting so big, he was going to need a spot in the river, but they were really, really worried that Jessica was going to hurt him if they let Richie into her river right next to the house. Um, and so I talked to Jessica about this and she thought about it and she said, okay, Richie can come to my river, but he can have this spot of the river. And she told me it was a spot probably like 50 feet away from the dock, right? So she was protecting her, her attention. He wasn't allowed to come to the dock. Um, and I go, okay, that's cool to know. And then she looked at me and she goes, you have to tell my people. W what? I hadn't told anybody yet. I, I she goes, you have to. At that point, the tour was wrapping up. I was walking up the steps away because she had a whole other group coming in right after. And the last thing she said to me was, you have to tell them. Oh. <sighs> So I then go through a whole existential crisis because I've been blessed with this gift and I worked on it to talk to animals. It's amazing. It's really cool to learn about their insights. But I told myself, if I don't use this to help animals, then what the heck am I doing with this gift? And I was so locked up in fear of being seen as completely crazy that I sat on a rock and cried. <laughs> Oh, actually, it's kind of bittersweet. I shouldn't laugh about that. And uh, I was at literal rock bottom. Well, Jessica's dad, human person that cared for her, was walking by. And I remember almost as if it wasn't me because I had already emotionally just let it all hang out. I stood up and I tapped him on the shoulder. And with a shaking voice, I told him what Jessica told me. And I was trying so hard. I'm sure the tears were huge in my eyes. I tried not to let any drip. <laughs> he looked at me. He said, very interesting. He said, do you know next week we were going to let Richie in the river? And that exact section you described is the exact section that we had already determined would be safe enough for him. So very interesting. You were spot on. And I nodded. And I walked back to the bus trying to wipe up the tears before any of my other classmates on the trip saw me. And uh, I realized it had actually gone well. well. That was 
one of my first times telling a stranger about what an animal told me. And uh, it was Jessica the Hippo. She'll always have a special place in my heart.